Carnal, carnal, carnal. You'll find out who said that and why on the next Good News program. The program you are about to watch is part of a free MP3 series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Growing Toward Greatness. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code GROW42 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. I am so glad to be here with you today with good news. I'm sure you've heard the bad news, but it's time now for good news. I was thinking the other day, I was watching the news and I watched the programs, you know, and, and you see different broadcasters and they spend their time giving you the news, bad news, a lot of it, secular news. And there are very successful programs and channels that do this. And I was thinking, oh, I'm so glad that I don't have to regurgitate the news of the day, that I can bring the good news to people, stuff that uplifts and builds up and changes lives and sets you free. I'm so glad to be here bringing you good news. It's so fulfilling to take things that I've known for many years, that I've been preaching, that I've been, you know, kind of, uh, they've kind of been stewing on the inside and now it's all ready and it's all coming out. And I'm trying to take the best stuff that I have and give it to you. I'm trying to take the best revelations of things that have changed my life the most and give them to you on this program. And speaking of good news, we have a newsletter and I don't talk about this that much. We're so, um, we're, we're doing so many things electronically these days, but we still send out a real newsletter and it comes out every couple of months and we would love to send you one if you would contact our office. I mean, if you're totally old school, here's what you need to do. Get your phone and use your dial, your rotary dial. Call 918-749-7744 and talk to our office. We would love to hear from you. Put your address on our mailing list and send you a newsletter and be able to communicate with you that way. We put articles in here. I'll keep you up to date on our ministry. We're able to send letters, personalized letters and things uh, if you'll get on that list. And that list is growing. We have an email newsletter list. If you'd rather receive information by email, go to our website and you can enter your email address. And that gr that's growing. Our Facebook page is growing. Our YouTube audience is growing. Everything is growing. Everything is going in the right direction. And I couldn't be happier. Most of all, I'm so glad you're there. You are on my heart and in my thoughts and prayers constantly. My good news audience has become my congregation. And I think about you all the time. I pray for you. I gather material for you. And this teaching on growing toward greatness, I believe, is some of the most valuable teaching that we have covered thus far. And I feel like, Paul, you know, in the beginning of this program, I wanted to bring truths of redemption and certain other other facts. But he said, I, I wanted to give you meat, but I had to give you milk. It's like we've gone through some of the milk stage of the process. But now, I mean, we're into some stuff you can really sink your teeth into this. These truths make a difference in your life. And if you really want to go on with God, then you need to understand the concept of growing and maturing, spiritually speaking, in the things of the Lord. We all need to grow in God. And there are things that we can do and things we can receive and walk in because of our maturity, the level of maturity that you can't get any other way. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, and I'm going to show you here how Paul, uh, as he was writing to the Corinthians, he finally, I think he just threw up his hands and just said, carnal, 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 you guys, you are just too carnal. And, and uh, there are real drawbacks to being carnal, and we're going to explain what that is as well in future teachings. But let's read this, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you're not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able, for you are still carnal. So if you could get anything out of this so far, is don't be carnal. Don't 
still be carnal. For where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Then he went on to say, when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So he's dealing with the, the symptoms of immaturity. And he said that, that it is envy and it's strife and division. And he goes right into division. He's talking about how they're dividing among themselves. This is not <laughs> conducive to doing the will of God in the, in the earth. It's not helpful to the body of Christ for people to create division over names, over people, over movements. You're going to have movements that you identify with, and you're going to have names of people that help you. But don't allow that to cause you to withdraw from the rest of the body. We need to do what we're supposed to do, be who we're supposed to be, but recognize and value other parts of the body that aren't like us. And we need to realize that just because we aren't like some other parts of the body, we're not inferior. We're not uh, separate from the body, an outcast, an outsider. If you're in Christ, you're in the body. So I, I was in 1 Corinthians 12, and I want to go back there because this is still 1 Corinthians, and he's dealing again with, these, with this division that comes from being immature. And I want to point this out. The first lie that causes division is 1 Corinthians 12, 15. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, is it not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So. This, this lie that creates division is simply the feeling of inferiority. You don't feel like you're of any value because you're not like someone else. You can't do what somebody else does. We're not part of that group or that movement. You know, the charismatic movement back in the 70s, we started out in storefront buildings. There were hundreds, maybe thousands of churches that were started out of the charismatic movement. And, and we started in storefront buildings with metal chairs and a piano, not a keyboard, a piano. And we would sing songs and they projected it on the wall. And it was wonderful and glorious. But I'll tell you what, we were on the wrong side of town. We were not accepted by the mainline. We were not. And, and if you're not careful, if you don't have an understanding of the word and grow in your own maturity, your own level of understanding, you can feel like that you're an outcast. You're an outsider. You're not part of the body. This feeling of inferiority is a sign of immaturity. We need to grow and become confident in who we are and what we have in Christ through growing. And you won't have this feeling that, if, well, I'm not an eye, a hand, so I'm not of the body, or I'm not a, uh, the ear can't, can't say because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. No, uh, we all have different functions in the body and we all recognize each other. Let me show you another lie that's the opposite that is also a sign of immaturity and it's a, a cause of division in the body. And this is what Paul's preaching against. In 1 Corinthians 12, 21, it says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, nor the head to the feet, I don't need you. That is the feeling of superiority. First of all, they felt inferior. Now they're feeling superior. And maybe you've felt the same way. You know, the sign of an immature Christian, they either feel worthless or they put too much value on themselves. And both are wrong. In this case, the eye is saying to the hand, I don't need you. Why come you're not like me? I'm an eye. I see. I, I can do this. I can do. You can't do any of that. What value are you? That's division caused by superiority. So many things that go on in the church today are just babies making noise. They're splashing in the shallow end of the pool. Nothing is really accomplished. 
And that's what Paul's talking about, saying, you, you guys need to grow up. You've got to move on in your level of spirituality so God can use you. <laughs> if we're still drawing boundaries and lines around this camp and that camp and deciding who's for us and who's against us and who, who we are and who they are, that's just a waste of time. And it's, a, it's divisive and it's not the will of God. We should spend more time growing up. Feed on the Word of God. Feed on the scriptures that tell you what you have and who you are. The high nutritious, the high octane scriptures in the Bible. We're going to get to this later as well. But feed where the Word of God is the richest. Go to where the meat is, the epistles. Read who you are and what you have and what Jesus has done for you and what he can do through you. You find these things out in the epistles. And as you grow in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of who you are in him and what he's done for you, then these feelings of inferiority that cause division, these feelings of superiority that cause division will melt away. It's better that we grow out of these things than just try to identify them and fight them. You know, you don't want to just fight the symptoms. That's why Paul said, look, there's envy, strife, and division. And you know why? Because you're carnal. You need to grow. He didn't, he was, he was just trying to not fight the symptoms, but he was going to the root of the, of the problem. And it's not getting over division and then go take care of envy and then go look at strife and try to eradicate strife. No, the key was grow, grow up. I, I have to take you back to Ephesians 4 because it's so applicable at this point. But this is where Paul said, we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Same thing. Saying, look, you, you're, you're deceived, you're running after the wrong things, you're, you're answering the wrong call, you're yielding to the wrong forces. You're children. You need to get the truth and grow up. We don't need to try to identify every false doctrine in the world. You wouldn't be able to do that because by the time you got them all identified, there'd be new ones. And it would be a, a, a full-time job just trying to identify every false doctrine. It's better to just grow up, feed on the truth, become familiar with truth, traffic in truth, get full of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Then when a false doctrine comes along, you'll immediately know that's just not truth. That's not the Word. And it won't take up any time. It won't take up any effort. And we can go on and do the will of God. I, I, I just keep saying this, but it's so true. Uh, a lot of things that go on in the name of spirituality today are just a waste of time. It's just babies playing church. <laughs> it's just babies, you know, splashing around in the shallow end of the pool. There are things that need to happen in our lives that come through time and through the process of growth. I wish that I could wave my hand over you and turn you into a spiritually mature Christian. I wish that it would come that way, but natural growth doesn't happen that way. Spiritual growth doesn't happen that way. We've got to go through the process. You have to have a, the proper diet and you have to spend time exercising the word. And, and really, you know, the Lord's been working with me on this and, and I've been teaching these things for many, many years. But he's talking to me about seasoning and aging and how the things in, in the world that have the most value are not instant. You know, um, some, some plants like dandelions, they grow up overnight, but they're not really long term. They, they may make a big splash, but they don't last long. However, an oak tree, it takes years, decades for an oak tree to grow, but it's solid, it's strong, it's durable. And, and there are things that, that, that come this way that are true spiritually as well. Now, the new birth is instant. The gifts of the Spirit can operate instantly. And the things that Jesus purchased through redemption are yours right now. You don't have to wait. You don't have to grow into a place where you deserve to be healed or you deserve to be saved. That's not what we're saying. That is an entirely different teaching. In fact, get my book called Good News and we talk about all of those things, the new creation, all the things that you have, all the things that belong to you instantly when you become a child of God. 
What we're talking about now is once you're in, now what? Well, there's a process. Now, Paul uses many different terms to describe this process. One of the most prominent is grow and growth and immaturity, babies, carnal. That'd be the opposite. An another way he says it is put on the new man. Take what's on the inside of you, put it on the outside of you. Another way, he says, is be transformed, Romans 12, 2, uh, by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Another way, he said, it is, is re be renewed in the spirit of your mind. All of these things really talk about the same truth, which is growing, maturing, changing, in, in, and it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight, but if we'll give some time to it, over time it will happen. So, uh, and he was comparing it to, to some of the things in the world that are the most valuable have taken the most time to process, like an oak tree, like, um, uh, I, I don't know, I, you know, I like to grill. And I, for a long time, I didn't know the difference between grilling and, and uh, barbecuing. And evidently there's a difference. Barbecuing is more like smoking. When you grill, you go light the fire, or start your grill, and you take the meat out there and you cook it like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's done. I like to grill. Barbecuing, smoking is a whole different ball game. They'll take the, they'll put wood on the fire and they'll take the meat out there. And I've had some of the best meat I've ever had. And you go, how did you fix this? Oh, I smoked it. I was out at four o'clock in the morning, lighting the fire. It's been out there for 16 hours. It's been cooked. I'm thinking 16, if I grilled something for 16 hours, it would be a charcoal. There would be nothing left. And so the, there are different ways to prepare things. And I believe God's just been dealing with me about the, the, the things of most quality have taken time to produce, such as diamonds. They, they are very high quality because they're durable. They last. They don't change. They don't fade. But it took so much time and so much pressure to develop that diamond that there aren't that many. And they're very valuable because of the process that it takes to, to produce them. And there are so many things in life like that. You know, they talk about aged beef. And I don't know what that means, but it took time. And, it, and it's worth more money because it's aged. It's better than instant beef. I mean, you could just go on down the line. There's instant coffee. Now, I wouldn't give you a dime for a cup of instant coffee. But real coffee, I've developed a taste for. And I like the coffee that comes from beans. And you know, I, I didn't know anything about it one Christmas. A pastor friend of mine sent me a bag of coffee beans. And I didn't know what to do with them, so I had to Google it. I bought a grinder, and I bought a coffee maker, and I ground the beans, and I made the coffee. I thought, wow, this is really good. Then you try instant, and it's not so good. In fact, most of the things in the world that are instant are very uh, cheap. They're, they're, the quality is much less. They don't last as long. They don't do as good a job as things that are built or grown or cured over time. And, and the Lord was helping me because, you know, I, I'd spent 30 years doing what I did. I traveled to churches and schools and nations for 30 years. That is a career. I mean, people do 30, 20 years in the military and they retire. 30 years, you can retire in many fields of service. I spent 30 years traveling and preaching, gathering this material. And then God spoke and said, now I want you to do something. I said, well, what are you saying? I, I just spent my whole life doing something. And it's as if I prepared all this time for what I'm doing right now. And, and so he had to talk to me about growth, maturity, time, curing, aging, seasoning. It's all important. There are some things that just don't happen instantly in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and, and if I have to learn it, you have to learn it. If it's true for me, it's true for you. We talked about the Apostle Paul. Man, if anybody would have hit the ground running, it would have been him. He was a Pharisee who knew the law. He kept the law. He got saved. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Man, you'd think he's ready to win the world, but not necessarily. 
the Apostle Paul was Saul before then. He, he was Saul when he got saved. And for 10 years he was Saul. And he preached in little churches and little places. And he defended the Christ and talked to people and learned the scripture and visited with the apostles. A lot of things happened. He went to Arabia, the desert, and got trained and learned. He grew for 10 years before he became the Apostle Paul. Well... If he needed to grow, so do we. If growth is important for him and for Jesus, you know, I was telling my wife, because we have just moved into a new season. And I feel like I'm starting all over again. And most people my age, I know I look young for my age, but most people my age, they're preparing for retirement. And, and, and I'm looking at the Lord's telling me like I'm just beginning some things. And I was just like, why? Why did it? Who prepares for 30 years? Who spends 30 years getting ready to do something? That's that's preposterous. That's a career. And my wife said, Jesus. I, oh, yeah, that's true. He did spend 30 years. He didn't do anything. He didn't heal one person. He didn't do one miracle. He didn't preach one sermon until he was 30 years old. He spent 30 years getting ready for his ministry. So, so the kingdom of God is, has so many parallels to the natural world. There are things that take time. What we want to do is make the most of our time. Get involved with this growth process. Do the things that are necessary for growth so that you're going forward. So that five years from now, the Apostle Paul doesn't show up and say, there's a lot of things I wanted to do with you, but you're still a baby. Why haven't you grown? Why haven't you gotten on the ball? I don't want to have that conversation. Let's make sure we do what we're supposed to do and grow and go forward in the things of God so that we're prepared to do what God has for us when the time comes. And that's really the key. I want to be ready. I want to be on course and on target. You know, it's funny to me. Let, let me take you to Hebrews 5. He says the same thing. Uh, the writer of Hebrews says the same thing again. But in Hebrews 5, in verse 12, he says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. By this time, who's keeping time? I didn't know we were in school or in class. But evidently we are. And the Lord was, was, was keeping up with their growth and their progress. And evidently they were behind. I don't want to be behind. I want to be on time. I don't want to be slow. I want to be where I'm supposed to be. And I want to learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in the area of growth and maturity. And I want to keep up my pace where I'm supposed to be. And if you have the same desire... I'll just encourage you, feed on the Word of God. Get into the epistles, spend time meditating and quoting, memorizing. Read books and get material, teaching material like this, and listen to it over and over. And you'll see that growth is the result of a good diet and exercise. It's just as simple as that. Well, I've got more teaching on this we'll get into I hope you're enjoying it. We really are on a journey, and we've got many more stops along the way that I think you'll find helpful, funny, amusing, pitiful maybe. I'm going to give you some personal examples that I know you're going to enjoy. I wanted to bring this up. If you uh, have watched this program and you've kept up with us at all, you know that we're definitely having growing pains. We are expanding in every area. It's just been a new day for our ministry. And one of the things that we desperately need, and I wrote a letter about this and uh, let people know, and people have been responding, but we need help. <laughs> let me say it this way. I need professional help. We have outsourced everything we can in our ministry. We have people that duplicate our, our CDs in another city. I have an IT guy that is in another city. We have film people and social media people that help us in another city. But we need help in our home office. I need to hire an executive assistant. Uh, uh, assistant. You know, we used to call them secretaries, but... They, they probably play a bigger role than now than, than they used to. I need a personal assistant to help me run the ministry. There are things that I just can't keep up with anymore. And that, that's frustrating because I like to have everything done. And things are getting by me, texts and emails and things that time 
time, uh, uh, ex expiration dates. Things are getting, getting by me, and I don't like it. I know we need help. My wife is helping all she can, but we've basically been doing this ourselves, and we need to hire someone. If you, uh, two things, please pray for us. I know some of you pray for our ministry, and you're praying for our future, and I thank you so much for that. Add this to the list. We need the right executive assistant. We need somebody to come in and, and that, that enjoys this type of work and just could take this thing and run with it and keep us up to date, keep us on course. I need to give myself continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word like the Bible says, and I need to give this business to someone else. And we're looking for the right person, but we also need help. It's been easy easier for us to do projects and to do filming projects and raise the money but obviously when you hire a person it's an ongoing expense so we need to grow some more at the same time we're looking for someone to hire and uh, and then get the right person so we can continue to grow so two things pray for us to find the right person and if God puts it on your heart send an offering so that we can begin to uh, get serious about finding a person and offer them a, a, a reasonable salary or support us on a monthly basis we would love to have more partners we're believing God for 500 partners and if you haven't joined that group yet you are welcome. Go to our website, go to the partner page, and you'll get all the information. Or call our phone number. We would love to hear from you. It's 918-749-7744. And if it goes to the answering machine, the voicemail, you know we haven't found anybody yet. But call and leave your name, and we'll get back with you as soon as possible. We'd love to hear from you. Good things are happening. And uh, when we find the right person, I'll let you know. Can't wait for that day. God bless you today. Hope you've enjoyed the teaching. We're going to continue on the next Good News program. And until then, may God's best be yours. In these teachings, you will be given the knowledge to make progress in your walk with God and see real, lasting change. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code GROW42 at checkout. Well, we are well into our filming season for this year, and I could use your help. Uh, the filming part and also the social media and the different outlets that we use to get this message out cost money and it costs money to get it out there. Uh, and so we would love to have you help us if you would contact our ministry and say, hey, I'd like to give a one time gift or I'd like to be a partner. Uh, your help is greatly appreciated and we'll put it to work immediately making new programs and getting the good news out to the world. Thank you and God bless. Greg Fritz Ministries is reaching new people daily with the Word of God online and at conferences. I have never heard of Greg Fritz. I actually never heard of Greg, Greg Fritz before this conference, but he's really funny and I love listening to him. That's what happens in services like this. Oh, you can't see it, but in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit will make sure that we do. We'll be talking about this and talking about that, and seeds are going out all over the congregation. And you may have come and said, I need you to do something for me, God. I've got to have my miracle. Well, listen, because it's those who hear that receive. It's those who hear. The Bible says, be careful how you listen. For to those who hear, more will be given. Isn't that an ingenious plan? If you have been encouraged by Greg Fritz Ministries, please partner with us to reach more people with the good news of Jesus.